Clawhammer banjo is often described as a down-picking percussive style. And that is true, but it's only half of the story. And we're gonna find out why today on the blueprints of Clawhammer banjo. I'm in double C. The way I like to teach banjo in the beginning is from a thumb-centric perspective. Let me show you why. Take your hand, wrap your hand around the banjo, engaging the fulcrum with your forearm. Extend your thumb and curl your fingers into your palm, but keep it loose. And I want you to slide along the head until you contact the fist string, the short string, with your thumb. And I want you to let the weight of your hand pull you down towards the floor. Let gravity take over and just hang on that fist string. Once you've engaged the fist string, once you've activated it towards the wound string, and that that string is buried in the pad of your thumb. It's bisecting your thumb. Start to pull out from the fulcrum, pulling the fist string with you straight out. No circular motions, no thumb picking, none of that. You're gripping and activating the fist string and then extracting the hand from the fulcrum and letting the fist string go. Do it again. Put hand into the instrument, activate the fist string. Straight out from the fulcrum, grip the fist string with the pad of the thumb, extract and let that thumb string snap back like a rubber band. Now freeze. Now you're in the perfect position for a good downstroke. Using the back of the nail, we're going to toss the hand in from the fulcrum with a slight whipping motion and we're going to come to land on that fist string simultaneous to the downstroke. That is critical. Don't let it lag behind. Don't try to scoop into it. You're doing your downstroke and you're colliding with that fist string and then you activate and extract. Downstroke, activate, extract. Downstroke, activate, extract, and then we get it going smoothly. Add some tempo, stay soft. Loose. A little bit faster, let's add some more tempo. You can hear I'm getting quieter, I'm loosening up. Keeping that fist string nice and full. More tempo. So yes, claw hammer is a percussive style because we are down picking with the back of the nail. That's 50% of your action. You can't have a downstroke unless you have an upstroke. And I think the upstroke is an often overlooked component to claw hammer banjo. And if your upstroke isn't sure footed, direct and efficient, your downstroke is going to be a disaster. The other thing, the other side of this is if you're a downstroke focused player, your music is going to have a very downbeat centric feel. And this fist string to my ear, to my mind, adds the counterweight to that downstroke. It adds the effervescence. It's the bubbles in the wine that make it champagne. That's what makes claw hammer so special, not the percussion, but the upstroke. And with an excellent upstroke, an efficient, clean upstroke, comes a really good positioning for an excellent downstroke. And this is why I like to kind of work backwards. I like to work from the thumb stroke first so that people understand what's going on there before getting into the percussive downstroke. Now let's just talk quickly about the golden rule of claw hammer banjo. 
It's a two-sided rule. It's like a coin. It's a heads and a tails. Heads is, every time I throw my hand down into the banjo, my thumb contacts a string simultaneous to the downstroke. That's heads. Tails is, every time I extract my hand from the banjo, my thumb leaves with my hand, regardless of whether or not it's sounding a string. And there's an interesting way to think about this rule. And here it is. The thumb follows the hand. We can, we can sum up the golden rule with that simple statement. The thumb follows the hand. The hand is a mallet and the thumb is always traveling with it straight in and out of the banjo. And here's another thought for you to sit with. Clawhammer is not a finger-centric style. Let that sink in for just a minute. When you throw your hand down into the banjo, the claw part is the delivery mechanism of the velocity that you create upstream from your hand. It's easy to think of this motion and this style of play as finger-centric, but when I see players who are thinking that way, they often are pushing and creating a hand that is simply too active for good efficiency. For me, my hand is the head of a mallet, and it's simply the delivery device of the velocity that I create further upstream at the fulcrum or when I'm playing fast, more towards the wrist. So when you think of it this way, that the hand is simply a mallet, it's a striking mechanism, and the thumb has to follow the hand, the thumb almost seems more static than you would really believe. That, that the thumb is sort of just attached to my hand, working with my hand, and it's not active, it's simply activating the string and sounding it, or not, on the upstroke. Now, the way to cultivate this is to simplify, get the left hand out of the picture. I like to simply work on my double thumbing pattern. A double thumbing pattern is what we did, it's simply a fifth string following every downstroke, but just doing that pattern is not enough. You need to know what you're doing and what you're listening for. So you're trying to balance out that pattern. You've got two notes in the double thumbing pattern, your downstroke and your upstroke note. You need to balance them out in terms of volume and keep them equally far apart in terms of time, so time and volume balance become the most important things to focus on when you're learning this percussive style, the double thumbing pattern. Now, we are thinking about the double thumbing pattern as a building block, and that's how I like to work. We're building you up from the ground up. So practice this daily, five minutes to 10 minutes a day is totally fine. It's way better to practice consistently than it is to cram on the weekend, so just pick up the banjo daily, do the simple double thumbing pattern, being focused on the sound, really stretching in with your ears, listening for that full downstroke, that full upstroke. Don't devolve into picking or pushing. Use the hand as a mallet, and that is your first building block of excellent claw hammer. These videos would not be possible without my generous supporters over on Patreon. If you like what I do, if you believe in it, if it helps you, please consider joining the Patreon community, and I will see you next week right here on Banjo Quest.